السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Wouldn't you agree that not everyone will be excited when something good happens to you, right? There will be people who will be upset because you just got a good job. There will be people really angry because you married someone they wanted to marry. <laughs> it happens, right? You will have people who will really be saddened when you gain. And you will have people who will be excited when you've lost. You lose a job, people say he deserved it. You hurt your leg, someone says, Alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, right? Imagine if you were to die and instead of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, someone says, Alhamdulillah, you sure? Find out. Same guy? Oh, wow. Finally taken away? You know, there are some weird people on earth. My brothers, my sisters, not everyone will be pleased at your success. And not everyone will be saddened when you're at a loss. But a true believer is taught to share the joy and happiness of others. Be happy for them truly. If they made a million and you're struggling, part of your duty as a Muslim is to thank Allah for what Allah gave them and to thank Allah for what, gave, what He gave you. And if you want to ask Allah, ask Him to bless you with something similar so that you can do a good thing with it. Say someone's made a million, right? And you say, oh Allah, I thank you for what you blessed them with. Allah, now you're a believer. I thank you for what you gave my brother, my sister, that person, the other person, the one who is a competitor with me in business. Oh Allah, I thank you for what you blessed them with. And I ask you to bless me with something similar or better so that I can use it in a good cause. Then... You're a true believer. And this is why I was speaking to a group of youngsters earlier and I said, when you've made as much money as you want, what are you going to use it for? You're going to get yourself a house, a car, you're going to spoil your family a bit, you're going to invest a bit of it and you still have so much you need to build your hereafter. But don't ever brag and boast and don't ever show off and today, while we're speaking of the Quran and the fact that it is the divine revelation, the book of Allah, the word of Allah, I want to tell you, even in the Quran, Allah tells us not to show off, not to brag, not to become arrogant and haughty. Understand if Allah has given you, you need to enjoy that within the obedience of Allah, be thankful to Allah and use what Allah gave you to become closer to Allah. When Allah has given you something, start praying, start changing, become truthful, abstain from sin. Wallahi, there are so many people, when Allah gives them, they forget Allah. And that's why Allah doesn't give some people. Because He knows where you are crying to have more, calling out to me, praying, getting up early morning and asking me, I love the way you are in terms of your connection with me. So I'm going to leave you in this particular condition because if I'm going to give you what you're asking for, you're going to take us out of the equation. I'd rather you die in this condition close to me, meaning close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, than to come out for a temporary time on earth, have whatever you asked for and have no relation with us and then come into the hereafter for eternity eternity and you're at a loss so when it comes to the story of yusuf alayhi salam allah blessed his father with 12 boys with 12 boys and allah almighty mentions to us that the father who is a prophet of allah yaqub alayhi salam jacob may peace be upon him allah almighty tells us that when the boys wanted to go to Egypt and they wanted to go to collect their rations he told them ya bani la tadkhulu min babin wahidin wadkhulu min abwabin mutafarriqa oh my sons don't all enter from one door enter from different doors what was the reasoning 
go and check the tafsir. It says that he was worried about the evil eye, people's jealousy. Imagine 11, handsome, beautiful, amazing, good-looking, lovely, well-built men, all looking similar. Brothers, obviously, there would be similarities walking through the door from one family. The messenger, Yaqub, may peace be upon him, is telling his sons, don't walk through that door all together. Obviously, they weren't 12. They were only 11 when they were walking through the door. Because Yusuf himself was the one whom they were walking to without knowing. But when they entered the door separately, they fulfilled what their father had asked them. The father's whole reasoning was that we don't want the evil eye to befall you guys so that something bad happens to you as a result of the jealousy and the evil eye of the people. And this is why it's important for us not to show off what Allah has blessed you with in a way that is filled with pride, arrogance, haughtiness, or belittlement of others, or lack of being sensitive of the fact that others don't have. Very important. Say, for example, I've got something amazing, and I end up, I'm talking about social media here, because we're living in the age of social media, and I end up showing off to the degree that the bulk of the people who are going to see it don't have anything near what I have. What am I doing? Am I not poking fun at them? Am I not making them burn? Subhanallah. You know, yesterday someone sent me a, a post of one of the events that happened a few days ago. And uh, I happened to read the comments. I spoke a little bit about it yesterday, but I want to mention a different point today. I happened to read some of the comments and some of the guys were saying, you know, these sheikhs make a lot of money out of this, you know? And I know it's a lie. And then someone was saying, oh, you know this, and you know the, the free mixing, and you know the, this, and they picked on every negativity that wasn't even there. And in my mind, I wanted to really put a comment, but I held myself back to say, burn on my brother. Keep burning, it's okay. You can burn, we know what we did. You are itching, so just scratch please where it is itching. That's all. Wallahi, as a human, you feel so tempted to give them a slap and to tell them you don't even know. Sometimes you feel tempted to curse someone. But you know what? Just hold back. Allah has blessed you. You don't need to get that low. Protect yourself. Hold back. It's like when I really want to yell at someone and I just hold back and I end up smiling and say, Salaam Alaikum. Like a second ago, I almost wanted to slap you across your but I didn't. I held back. That is a true believer, inshallah. Where? You held back your anger. You made sure that, you know what? I carried myself against all odds. It's a human trait to want to do something when you are being attacked. It's a human trait. Someone swears you, it's human to want to swear back. It's normal actually, but Allah tells you, just control yourself. Allah tells you, you defend yourself in a way that is befitting. And that will resolve the matter. But if it's going to create a bigger disaster, then don't do it the way you think you want to do it in that moment. But let it calm down a bit and you plan what you want to do. A lot of the times, we're not showing off, but we're letting people know, mashallah, we had an event, a beautiful attendance. The idea is to encourage others. Next time, I want to be there. Oh, wow, people say it was lovely. I went. It was amazing. So many people, so much this. We feel the brotherhood. We feel the togetherness. We feel the unity. Nobody came up and made us feel like we were already in hellfire, you know? It happens sometimes. You, you go for a talk and the way the, the speech is being delivered, you can already feel the heat of Jahannam through your left shoulder somewhere, right? And you're starting to just scratch and itch and you start sweating. You know what the sweat is? That's what it is. But when someone comes and gently remind you and so on, the idea to showcase some of the activity is in order to encourage others that, look, you know what? A lot of people come, a lot of people benefit. Not everyone's on the same level. If you're upon a level that's way beyond talks like these, by all means, you don't have to come. You can benefit from whatever affects you. 
but the bulk, the masses are people looking for any form of inspiration, goodness. We are going through the most challenging times as an ummah. What's happening in Gaza is unacceptable. We pray for them day and night. We do whatever we can in our capacity to help them, to reach out to them, to ask Allah Almighty to grant them the victory and the assistance and the help and to liberate them completely by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you're sitting online, you might not know what the other person is doing. And then what happens, shaitan comes to you who's just sitting on Instagram, really doing almost nil and start commenting about what others are not doing. You don't know what they're doing. You're only saying what you think they're not doing. It happens to me all the time. People say, you don't care. Wallahi, if you knew how much I care, you would be ashamed. People say, you didn't say this, you didn't say that. Chill. Maybe you didn't see it, number one. You don't know of what was deleted, number two. You don't know of what else we've done that you cannot do. And maybe we didn't make a noise about it. You don't know what has happened. So as an ummah, don't let your frustration make you hate on one another because of what you think the other did not do when you don't know what the other actually did. That's out of your sight. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. We care for each other. If anyone here is struggling, Wallahi, we are here for you as an ummah. As an ummah. That's the whole reason why we have talks like these. Someone posted a comment saying, people are dying in Palestine and you guys are just gathering. I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean? I commented, I said, well, you're just sitting on Instagram, aren't you? It's a fact. At least people are gathering, conscientizing people, educating people, raising money, awareness with the children, and so much more. Everything's happening, mashallah. Everyone's on a different level. Not everyone's going to do what you think they should be doing. They're going to do whatever they believe they can do between them and Allah. But I don't believe there is a single just human being on earth who doesn't feel that what's happening is absolutely wrong and our brothers and sisters in Gaza are oppressed and wronged and so much more. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So when you're showcasing something for the right reasons, then it's okay if people have negative comments. Literally, they can fly a kite. But if you're boasting and bragging about the favors of Allah upon you, then it's dangerous. You're calling towards that which is negative to come to you. The evil eye is true. The hadith of the Prophet Al-Ayn The evil eye is true. It can affect you. Be careful. So what should I do? Number one, don't intentionally ask for trouble. Like I told you, here's the Prophet Yaqub telling his sons, don't all go together. You might or I might say, what was so important about that? Well, for Allah to mention it in the Quran, in verses that are considered acts of worship by merely reciting them, there has to be something serious. Secondly, we have those who are waiting to create trouble for you. So when you show everything that's happening in your life and every detail that's there, they know how to destroy your life. Who told them about you? You did yourself. You showed them everything. You even told them where you live. You gave them lives to show you that now you're not at home, you're on holiday, so they know when they can go and rob. People are doing this. There are people sitting online watching others and just seeing when they're not at home in order for them to go and pinch. Syndicate. It's happening in some places of the world. I'm sure you've heard of it, but my brothers and sisters, doesn't that just go to show that you don't share every detail of yours online? Sometimes you see brothers and sisters post posts without realizing this is going to be watched by the whole wide world. And this will remain after your death. And this is something that people will remember you for and remember you by way beyond your life on earth. And sometimes, if it is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unfortunately, after you have repented, you might have to face the challenge of some of your haram content remaining on there for so long after your life has changed totally. So it's best you don't 
become proud of haram that you're doing. I started off by telling you the favor of Allah upon you, don't expose it too much. Imagine if the favor of Allah you don't expose too much. What about when you're sinning? The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, there will continue to be goodness in the people for as long as they don't openly and proudly sin. When you're proud about the sin and you're discussing it and encouraging others, the hope begins to fade. If you're sinning and you know this is something I'm not supposed to be doing, what happens? You're ashamed of it. For as long as you're ashamed of your sin, it's a sign of your connection with Allah. May Allah grant us a good connection with Him. You're ashamed. You don't want to be exposed. You do it while you're hiding. You don't want people to know and so on. Or oh, it's a weakness. I tell you, we've arrived at an age where people are proud of the wrong they do and they encourage others to do wrong. That's why the hope begins to fade. May Allah Almighty grant us his. But worse than that is when Allah guides you after that, it might be a moment of deeper regret because, Alhamdulillah, you changed. But A'udhu Billah, the content that's so embarrassing is there and it's forwarded by so many people and watched by millions and others are committing sin as a result of this and that and you don't want that to happen. I know people who've repented long back and then they've come to ask that, you know what? I can't get rid of this content, it's there. I can't get rid of this content, it's there. I know of people who've done some absurd things. I don't want to say exactly what, but absurd things. And then they come later on and say, you know what, I turned to Allah. What do I do about this? Well, you know what, you're going to have to live with it because try your best. If not, Allah will forgive you. He will forgive. He does forgive. Then the question comes, that the hadith says whoever sets a good example will get a reward of everyone who follows that example. You want to encourage someone to do good, to read Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday, to get up for Salah, to do something for the sake of Allah, to read from the Quran Lee app, or for example, to put on a better clothing than they are. You want to encourage them in a good way. Allah says we will reward you for their deeds because you encourage them. And we will reward you for the deeds of anyone who got guidance as a result of what they did. And anyone who got guidance as a result of what those who changed from that person and then changed from them and then changed from them and so on, even after your death up to Qiyamah, you continue accumulating good deeds and good deeds because that's how Allah works. His mercy is such that the original person who taught the goodness will get an equal reward that is deserving by every single person who did good until Qiyamah. That's what the hadith says. This is the reason why Muhammad وسلم, has the highest status. While, you, while we are seated here, wallahi, he is getting a reward. Can you imagine? While we are here, all seated, Nabi Muhammad وسلم, and the companions who were involved in protecting the deen, and all of those who, are, who brought it down to us are getting a full reward of the fact that you and I are seated here. Imagine the reward we would get when we can encourage someone. May Allah Almighty have mercy on all of us. So the question was, if I've done something bad, will I get a sin right up to the day of judgment for the bad that was followed thereafter? I want to tell you, it's a very serious question because the hadith says whoever sets a bad example will have the sin of what they've done the sin of the example, the sin of the people who followed it, and the sin of the people who followed those who followed them, and the sin of the people who followed those who followed those who followed them, and so on, right? Up to the end. And you continue accumulating sin. But if you sought the forgiveness of Allah, it cuts it off. How's that? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It chops it off. How does it chop it off? Oh Allah, forgive me. I'm going to try my best to reverse whatever I've done. Forgive me. Allah says, we've forgiven you. And Allah chops it off. So now, if you repent, then that particular line of evil is chopped off. But the good is never chopped off. So there are people who have videos online filled with nudity and beyond nudity. Acts that perhaps, you know, they themselves are embarrassed of. Immorality and nudity, whatever it may be. And if they happen to turn towards Allah and change their lives 
and they repent, they should try to delete whatever they can. But there will by default be some that they probably wouldn't have managed to delete it. What do you do? I know a brother who gave the rights of what he did to an external company. And when he repented and turned and came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he could not reverse that. And he says, look, I don't even want the money. And I don't, but they own whatever happened. They own it. What do I do? And so I said, you know what? You seek the forgiveness of Allah. Will Allah forgive me? The answer is always yes. The answer is always yes. Did you know when Allah says, I will not forgive shirk, he's talking about those who died and did not repent. He's never ever talking about the people who were alive and repented. Not once. So when you say Allah does not forgive shirk, what that means is if you died without repenting from it, but if you repented from it in your life, then you can look at the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu What did they believe before they accepted Islam? Were the bulk of them, especially in Makkah, not all mushrikeen of the highest order? They were. But they sought the forgiveness of Allah. Allah forgave them. One of the traps of shaitan is that he comes to you and he makes you think, you know what? You won't be forgiven. You did too much. That's a trap of shaitan. Allah never said that. Allah said the opposite. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا I'm sure you must have heard this verse earlier today. It must have been someone who said this verse and read it. Where Allah is saying, O oh my worshippers, who have transgressed against yourselves, you've committed sins, you've done immorality, you committed major sins, minor sins, whatever sins, never ever lose hope in my mercy. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for indeed He will forgive all your sins. He is most forgiving, most merciful. That's Allah. So if you've done good and you taught good and you encouraged good, good news, you get a reward all the way. If you've done bad, and you've encouraged bad and you've been a part of bad and now you've repented inshallah because of the repentance you chop off the sin from accumulating it doesn't accumulate but there's one thing you need to try to do still and what is it try to do something that will result in the reversal of what you did in terms of negativity reversal so for example lots of immorality lots of things that happened that were displeasing to allah what am i doing i repented to allah number one i deleted as much as i could number two then i started creating beneficial content you see i'm trying to balance the thing i started creating beautiful beneficial content what that will do it will give people the opportunity to see the new you and it will give them an encouragement to say, I need to change my life too. And perhaps, wow, if she could do it, I can do it. And if she went through struggles, I don't mind going through struggles. Or he did it, I can do it, inshallah. So this is why we say, not only should you repent, but thereafter, you should try and reverse the bad effects of what was done in the past. I give you another quick example. You, you were backbiting about someone who was close to Allah and you said some really nasty things. Today, I believe we're living in an age where many of us lose the reward of the good deeds that we do simply because of the click of a button. Someone swears another and we just retweet it, we like it, we comment about it, we say yay or whatever and we let it spread through our own channels or accounts. And because of that, you don't realize you have attacked a friend of Allah. What happened? Your good deeds are lost to that particular person. We're living in an age where people do a lot of good deeds, but they're not conscious of how they're losing those good deeds. The gossip needs to stop. The slander needs to stop. The ill feeling needs to stop. Learn to support each other. I had a person today ask me about marriage and they said you know what the family is disagreeing and this person is not agreeing and either a mother or a father or a brother or someone and my brothers and sisters don't be too hard we're living in an age of hyper sexualization hyper the highest we, I've, we've, it's probably going to get worse as time passes and you're making it difficult for someone who wants to marry halal according to you they're making a mistake talk to them no problem convince them try but if it gets beyond the point let them be it's halal i know a guy and i'm going to say something very silly 
I know a guy who said to me that, you know what, I've been married so many times I don't even know. I said, what are you talking? What are you talking? I said, that's an insult, that's haram. He said, what do you mean haram? Where? I said, it's so wrong, it's immoral. You can't do that. He says, no, I don't do haram. I just do halal. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy is really absurd. But he tells me, you know what, because, and he's a good-looking lad, wealthy person, really, you know. And I said to myself, this is mad. He says, because sometimes I get people who really want to get married to me and they, nothing will soothe them. I end up getting married to them and within a week they realize what they did was totally wrong. It was the only way they had closure. I said, brother, you are nuts, literally. You are crazy. Don't ever tell me about this and I don't even want to talk to you. I said, it's unacceptable. I don't mind if someone struggles because they couldn't get what they wanted, but I do mind when you think you have a solution that is actually belittling the person even more. By the time they realize what has happened, it's true. And this is why I say, my brothers and sisters, don't ever fix yourself onto one particular thing. Well, Allah's kept so much on earth. When you fix to one particular thing, wallahi, you suffer a loss. I'm not saying don't work towards something you want. Work towards it. That's part of your ibadah of Allah. Allah wants you to work towards what you believe is beneficial for you. Talk about marriage. Allah wants you to work towards getting it. This evening I met a sister saying she's already 50, never been married. May Allah grant her a spouse who will be the coolness of her eyes. Say Amin. But I can tell you what, I told her it's... The fact that you keep a lookout and you have the hope and you keep making dua and you keep trying, that is an act of worship on its own that can get you Jannatul Firdaus without reckoning. I have hope. Oh, maybe I was never meant to get married, but I have hope. I kept trying, I kept looking out, I kept you know, doing whatever I could in my capacity that Allah's given me, which is very limited. And I kept crying to Allah whenever I could. That act of worship alone, whether you were to be married or not to be married, Allah knows. But because of this act of worship, Allah says, you know what? You're a VIP. You're a VIP. And I always tell people, I'd rather not be married than being married to an idiot who's going to cause me a lot of hardship, harm, mentally, physically, emotionally, and whatever otherly that there is, right? I'd rather not be, but I wouldn't know. Why? Because I really think it's all rosy out there, right? If Allah's kept you in a certain way, don't just sit back and relax. Work hard, but understand Allah's got a plan for you. He's always protected you from something. Today, another brother speaking to me about his job, and I told him, and this is a fact. I told him, I said, if you lose your job because of your closeness to Allah, the first thing you need to do is thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. I just lost my job. Be excited about it. Wallahi, excited about it. I lost my job. Alhamdulillah. And then work hard towards getting another job or doing something to earn an income. And Allah will test you with a certain period of sabr. You have to go through it. Allah will test you with some time in which you have to bear patience. You have to make ends meet. It might not be easy, but for as long as you have two things, sabr and taqwa. Allah will fling the doors open very soon in such a way that you will thank him again and again and again for closing that initial door and for letting you go through this moment of struggle. Wallahi. That's the promise of Allah. He's going to fling open your door. Allah closed one door and I'm a steadfast person. That's Allah's mercy. I believe so. I'm going to thank him. Allahumma lakal hamd. Oh Allah, I thank you. I don't understand. But I know you are my Lord, you're going to take of care of me and you're going to do it in such an amazing way. I'm going to continue praying. I'm going to become a better person and I'm going to be steadfast and I'm going to keep looking and keep working as hard as I can. You will open my doors. That's conviction. Allah will open your doors. May Allah Almighty grant it to us. So it's very important for us to realize that Allah Almighty has kept a lot of goodness on earth. Sometimes we refuse to see it because we're closed. Don't play with people. Don't belittle people. I was telling you, 
if I have backbitten about someone online or slandered them or hurt them or harmed them, I might not have access to that person to seek forgiveness. It happens online nowadays where there are people whom we talk so much of rubbish about, we don't even know them. Firstly, we pay a price for it. I've always said that and I've seen it. You know when you see the people who write the worst comments online, wallahi, their lives are already upside down in most cases. Do you know that? They are not content. If they were content in the true sense and they had iman, I promise you they wouldn't even do what they did. They wouldn't. But the fact that they're swearing and they're doing this and belittling, no matter who it is, even if they're looking practice, practicing, they are suffering souls. That's what they are. They are suffering souls. I pity them. But the problem is, they don't have access to those whom they've wronged. Not at all. One day when they realize and they want to apologize, it's going to be almost impossible. So now what do I do? Impossible. I swore this guy, I slandered him, I falsely accused him, I, or her, or whatever. It happens even among the sisters, maybe. Some people say maybe more amongst the sisters, I don't know. But it's happening online. And people are crying and shedding tears as a result of what you and I might have done against them online without even knowing them. People are making dua against you day and night because of a comment or two that you left on their posts. Can you imagine? Would you like that? Well, I tell you what happens. Because you have no access, the only thing you have is to turn to Allah. And when you turn to Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. And then you've got to say, oh Allah, bless that sister. Oh Allah, grant her ease. Give her good health. Give her Jannah. Give her a good spouse. Grant her blessed children. What am I doing? I'm compensating for the evil that I did. I'm trying to do good now. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go online and I'm going to say good things about the same person. What am I trying to do? Reversal. Because I don't have access to them. That's the only way you're going to be redeemed. There's no other way. If not, you're going to face that person on the day of judgment. You're going to face that person on the day of judgment. I tell you something interesting again. Two days ago, one of my close friends forwarded me a comment that someone left saying they want to spit on the face of my mother. I'm talking about me. And this guy, who's a very good friend of mine, responded by saying, delete your post. You don't know this guy's mother. She's always reading the Quran. She's a very, very noble person. We've known her, whatever. He wrote some nice things. And then he says, because you're going to face her on the day of judgment. And that just struck something in me. I, om I shed a tear, actually. I say, true, you can swear me as much as you want. I don't mind. I won't even hold it against you on the day of judgment. You know why? It's okay. Let it go. Inshallah, may Allah grant us acceptance. But you're starting with my mother. Come on. My mother. Now you're entering territory where it's no longer you and I. You're asking for trouble. Trust me, you don't even know who you're talking about. And wallahi, this is two days ago. I still have the screenshot. And I'm thinking, subhanAllah, what did you gain? And the guy is practicing with a name that you wouldn't even believe. Looks practicing. There's no practice there, man. How are you going to undo it? You have no access to my mother whatsoever. You don't even know her. Wallahi, whenever I see my own mom, she's about 80 something now, her late 80s. She's always reading Quran, smiling, greeting. I'm sure we've got either mothers or grandmothers just like that. And she's always interested in her and Allah. She's either Salah or Quran. She doesn't even waste time eating. She probably eats a morsel or two a day. And look who you're swearing. You want to spit at the face of my mother. What did I do? Something that you didn't like perhaps. It's okay. It's okay. Look at how suffering you are. My mom doesn't even know you. I'm mentioning this in honor of my own mother. And all our mothers. I would never do it to your mother. Even if I had beef with you. You know what beef means, right? They should have just said pork, even if I had pork with you, because that's the haram stuff. Okay. But anyway, even if I had beef with you, I wouldn't want to put in your mom and dad into the scene here, because wallahi, who knows? They're, they're innocent, man. They, they may be so close to Allah, and I don't want to say something I'm going to regret. And then one day when you want to seek, you're going to have to do something on behalf of this person. You'd rather go and drill a few boreholes somewhere in a poor country on behalf of this person whom I wronged. Maybe it might do you some good. May Allah grant us ease because you will face them on the day of judgment. Wallahi, you face them on the day of judgment. 
and don't think it's going to be easy. That day is really a tough day. And Allah mentions this in the Quran, in Revelation. He talks about it so many times to say, fear the day that your children won't avail you, your wealth won't, won't avail you. It's between you and Allah. You need to face the judgment day. So I want to go into this beautiful day of judgment and I want to be able to have a good day on that day. It's going to be a tough day. Well, if you want a good day on the day of judgment, seek the forgiveness of Allah and don't harm people. Facilitate their lives. You might be a person in charge. You might be in control. You might have authority of your own little flock, be it at work or at home or anywhere else. Understand that Allah Almighty has kept you responsible. He's going to question you about it. Behold, every one of you is a shepherd and every one of you is responsible for his or her flock. Allah is going to ask you, how do I prepare for the day? Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Don't harm people around you. Connect with Allah. Care for those who are struggling. Reach out to them. Allah will open your doors. My brothers and sisters, whenever I see these beautiful faces, you know, I'm the one who asked for the lights to be turned on because normally they off and I can't see you guys. I'm talking to just a dark room. And I said, no, no, no. I need to see faces at least. I can see this guy smiling. See some of the handsome dudes. How many of you are not married? Put up your hands. No wonder why you're concentrating so much. MashaAllah. Such a big number. I went to one country and you know what happened? One brother comes and says, no, I'm not married. The speaker says, okay, come here. He says, right, my beloved sisters, this brother's looking for a wife. Anyone interested? I said, wow, I can't believe what I just heard. I had to quickly run away. I didn't want to see what happened. And I can't even tell you what happened. But mashallah, the brother, I don't know if he's married yet. I think after that he was confused because, the, you know, too many to choose from. Astaghfirullah. Nonetheless, may Allah make it easy for all of us in our own suffering and struggles. Look, my brothers and sisters, I want to end off by saying one beautiful thing. While you're connecting with Allah and connecting to the Quran and connecting to what is right in your own journey, and I've said this yesterday and I said it before, repeating it. There are too many distractions that will come and be very judgmental and pass comments without knowing your journey. You know your journey. Don't let those comments distract you from the growth that you know you've had. Don't let the comments and the negativity and the people make you believe or think that, you know what, I'm not good enough. Don't let them make you lose focus. If you're improving and you're becoming a better person, there are so many people sitting online ready to attack you without considering the progress you've made over time. They are not figures who are experts in the da'wah. They are not experts in calling towards Allah. They don't realize how you need to bring the people considering their own circumstances. Everyone is different. I'm not saying compromise the deen of Allah, but I am saying everyone, including born Muslims or those who've been Muslims for decades, has struggles. And if you're not considerate of where they were and where they are, and you start passing negative comments, you might turn them away from the deen completely. And you are a person who's so, so far from Allah, but you think you're so close to him. And this is why those who are aggressive online, I find they are the first people to actually quit in their relationship with Allah. They, are, they poke fun at everyone. They call people names. They are far from Allah and they go away. And another thing is also true. There are some disbelievers who poke fun at the Muslims so badly. Trust me, some of them have hearts that are soft and they come to Allah in an unbelievable way. Allah guides them and brings them. So don't lose hope. Sometimes you find someone really swearing Allah, swearing the Rasul Wasallam, unacceptable things, but Allah guides them. Allah brings them. I know so many of these people who come and you can't believe, wow, this person actually is, has turned to Islam. They used to do this, they used to do that, they used to swear, they used to make life a misery for the Muslims. Today, the person is actually defending Islam. That's Allah. Allah has done it from the very beginning to the very end. You and I should just concentrate on our own journey. When people say things encouraging, thank Allah. When they say something discouraging, either 
Don't let it affect you. Don't look at it. Don't want to know about it. Or if you look at it and you read it, ask yourself what they are saying. Does it have substance to it? If it does, well, inshallah, I'm going to get there anyway. But the way they're saying it is so bad, so bad. And I, I go back to the incident of the guy, the Sahabi, who peed in the masjid. He peed in the? He peed in the? Okay, let me word it another way. What did he do in the masjid? He peed. See, they said it more. They said it louder. Okay, he peed in the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ spoke to him with so much of respect. Do you see the hadith? The Prophet ﷺ spoke to him with so much of respect. When he peed in the masjid, I don't think what you did is as bad as peeing in the masjid. And people speak to you so disrespectfully. And then they say that they are close to Allah. Can you believe it? May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. May Allah Almighty open our doors. May Allah Almighty help us remain steadfast. Please work on yourselves and don't let anything discourage you. So much is needed from this ummah. And you are needed as a member of this ummah. I know people who have done more for the ummah than you and I are able to. But when you see them, you wouldn't believe this is the person. It's up to Allah. Allah uses whomsoever He wishes. May Allah make us steadfast. And may Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar!